you have some superpowers. They're no better or worse than your friend's superpowers. They're probably different. Just like you have an ideal diet and the foods that are most compatible with your body might not be the same as your friend. And neither of them is good or bad. They're just different. So it's your job to understand your strengths and your weaknesses and figure out what strengths do you want to double down on and what weaknesses are you going to say, oh, thank God, I know I'm weak at that. I can hire that. <laughs> You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, a lifestyle podcast hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Tune in for a new episode every Tuesday to hear our honest conversations about topics like wellness, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and self-development with guests who are really smart, really inspirational, and really fucking funny. <laughs> it's real, it's raw, and it's unfiltered. Inspired by our transition from our 20s to our 30s, we realized it's so much more than that. Our mission is to provide you with the tools, guidance, and motivation to help you navigate any transitions in your life and propel your personal growth. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. Hello. Hi. Welcome back to Almost 30 Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. We're about to wash away. <laughs> here it is. Been raining for f five days. Five days in LA. And I hate to complain because it never rains here. But I started to think about people who live in places where it rains all the time. And I got like... Bless. Oh, man. Bless. Because I'm like... Day five, I'm struggling right now a little bit. Because I liked it in the beginning. And now I'm a little... There's something sexy about sad. the rain. Totally. There is. If you have someone to have sex with in it's the rain. True. <laughs> That's all we've been doing all week outside. Yeah. Just rolling just around. Rolling around. In the there was It rained like this a year ago. It was like a week of this. Seems like mm. it happens it's a little biblical. yearly where it's like a week of rain. But I guess Midwest and Northeast is really getting hit. I mean, when was the last time you heard a thunderstorm? You know, we don't get those yeah, out here. At we all. don't get like I don't need, You know lightning. what? We don't see lightning yet. Lightning or thunder, which I forget what the cause of that is. So lightning is the cause of thunder, but the heat, I think it's the the heat, pressure. Yeah. It's like the hot meets the cold air or something yeah. like that. But I wonder why lightning... <laughs> Just to give like all the schooling I've had around this climate, weather and environment. I know. <laughs> you guys don't listen to us for meteorological <laughs> I advice, I, I hope. So yeah, we don't know. But it's been raining for a week in LA. It's, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. But I hope you're having a great week. Um, happy you're here. So glad that you joined us at Almost 30. We are a podcast that talks about everything that happens in life transitions. <laughs> Every time I say the pitch, it's different. That time it wasn't good. <laughs> we let's are, keep it. Yeah, let's. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Just remember that. No, but you guys have um, all dictated so much of our content and the topics that we discuss. And if you haven't already joined the Secret Facebook group, we are in there. Uh, Krista and I are in there, but there's also 9,000 other people in there uh, talking about everything and anything. Yeah. And it's a really safe space. So, so, so much of our content comes from, from you all. And it's nice to people ask Lindsay and I, or, you know, people on our team, Chloe and Kayla to uh, post um, anonymous questions. So we've been doing that as well. So our sweet community has been supporting other sweet ones that want to remain anonymous in the group and have their questions answered. Mm -hmm. Happy to do that. Yeah, always. Um, and I think we were talking about in the group at one point when when Dave Asprey was first on the podcast, mm -hmm. just how smooth and baby face he smooth was and, and how he's not face. aging and how he's just a delight. Delight. <laughs> when me and Lindsay... So oftentimes in interviews, when people interview... Lindsay and I, people ask about um, people that we've had on the podcast that have been influential to us and that have made a mark, you know, on us and our lives. And I oftentimes think back to our interview with Dave Asprey and how engaged he was, how present he was, how kind he was, um, and just how intelligent he is. And, you know, for someone to be that smart and be able to laugh and joke and be grateful and, understand fully what matters in life is is special. So um, we are huge fans of Bulletproof. I go there quite often in Santa Monica and we are so honored to have him on the podcast for a second time. 
Yeah. And his new book, Game Changers, What Leaders, Innovators, and Mavericks Do to Win at Life is out now. You can get it on Amazon, but kind of wanted... because our So our interview with Dave was not as long form as you know we had planned, but we got a lot in, but we kind of just wanted to dig a little bit more into the book because I think this is a really nice book to have around mm-hmm. that you can just kind of open like throughout your day if yeah. you're just needing a little like guidance, you know, suggestions, things like that to optimize how you're feeling and what you're doing. Yeah, Dave Dave came over too to, for the interview. Oh yeah, it was the best. <laughs> you guys, he came over. I, I you know. It was pouring. Pouring rain. Pouring. Pouring rain. <laughs> 9 a.m. 9 a.m. And we are two girls. In a in a an apartment turned studio. <laughs> Dave is a very rich man. I'm sure, I'm sure Dave has seen some nice places <laughs> and and experienced some very nice things. But this place is filled with love, and I know yes, Dave felt it. Yes, we got bottled waters and you know yeah. everything. I was like, shit, I gotta go get bottled. Yeah, water. she did. She brought glass water bottles, <laughs> so we wouldn't have any. But um, yeah, I mean, it was so nice of him to come over. He was obviously a delight. But it's just so funny when we have. People like that that are just like, yeah. Well, what we're chilling with billionaires on, yeah. on the reg, and you know we won't be in this studio forever. But it's just so interesting, like that. Like, you, you know, you're at the top of the charts, millions of downloads, <laughs> you know, hundreds of millions of downloads. And I was like looking around, I'm like, mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> but that's the thing, and like I think you know we laugh and joke about it because it is funny, but it's like you can do this wherever you are, and you know. We've had celebrities come in here. We've had whoever come in here. And it, after a few minutes, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. here we are, mm-hmm. two humans. And that's how it felt with Dave. Mm-hmm. He's so smart mm-hmm. and so tall. Very, you guys, he's well, tall. <laughs> like six, five? For sure. Like, because I always For compare sure. to Justin, like where I am on, because Justin's like six, three, six, four. And I was like, wow, you're like six, five. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he was so tall. So tall. That is a rarity. Yeah. To be that Especially out here. 100%. (laughs) Honestly. But yeah, I actually was surprised when I read Game Changers that like there was, there's a pretty big emphasis on, you know, the intangible. So whether it's the words you choose and how they just set limitations and expectations on you that you're not aware of or, you know, the importance of downtime and quiet and nothingness in order to, you know, let your brain regenerate and rest. It was just so interesting how he's he's really taking a holistic approach to bringing this information to the masses. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I think that was what I really, really liked was, um, as it relates to that, is about being flexible. So having... Um, like stretching or yoga or having a type of movement that really helps to develop the mind-body connection that is a little bit more soothing for your nervous system, a little bit more soothing for, you know, your brain and mind. So the encouragement of doing yoga, whatever type that is, if it's yin, if it's a stanga, vinyasa, flow, whatever it is, incorporating that into your life so that you can learn proper movement um, and stay nimble. Mm-hmm. And it's all, it just translates to them. Obviously we know like yoga is for the mind as well, but like to be flexible in your body is to be flexible in your mind. And I notice like if I haven't stretched or if I haven't done yoga in a while, I'm kind of rigid and like resistant to what might come up unexpectedly. And I definitely think it translates. Yeah. In addition to, and the one of the one parts too, that really struck me was the part about, um, that he says basically um, that the number one and most important piece of advice for everyone that he interviewed. So that's people like Esther Perel, that's Tim Ferriss, Ariana Huffington, you know, our friends, (laughs) all of our friends, basically (laughs) all of our best friends and like speed dial people um, was that the number one thing that would made the most impact on their lives to be a game changer was their diet. So diet, what you put in your body is the most critical thing to help you conquer the day, to get the most you need done, to focus, to be the most present, uh, to be the best you can be more than meditation, more than exercise. Um, So that was just like a gentle reminder for me that, you know, here I am kind of trying to do all of these things, trying to 
you know, just run around and, you know, run the business, live my life, be a friend, whatever. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I will not nourish myself because it takes too much time. It's not like I'm going to fucking jack in the box, fast food. But, you know, I, I kind of will choose a faster route of eating rather than like slowing down to really eat, to enjoy my food, to figure out and think what is the best thing for me, um, what will sustain me through the day, what will keep my blood sugar levels, you know, going, or what will keep my blood sugar levels um, stable. Uh, So that was just a really great reminder for me that that foundation is part of your success. Yeah. I know it's funny. I guess if I think about it too, and I'm sure you're the same way, where over the years, that awareness of how food affects, you know, the food you take in affects everything has caused me to not be so impulsive. I mean, I remember literally the train of thought was, I studied all day. I deserve a whole pizza to myself or I'm hung over as shit and I feel terrible. So I deserve this. Like it was like this reward system that was actually making me feel more terrible and more depressed or just unclear, you know, fo- like brain fog and all of that. So it's just so cool how it's changed. I literally very rarely have those thoughts sometimes, like every once in a while, but it's it's very few and far between. And it's a nice like control to have, I guess, where it's not this like rewarding with bad mm-hmm. shit. 100%. I think for you, I wonder if that's because I think you're really good about like avocado and fat Mm. You know, I think you're very good about the timing of your meals and stuff like that. The intermittent fasting definitely helps. Yeah. Now that I'm not teaching and I'm just not um, expending that as much energy, I'm not as hungry. But yeah, but come dinner time, I mean, I want to like fucking slay a lot of shit, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) like because for me, the dinner is a comfort time. Dinner is darkness like meaning it's dark out. Totally. It's dark out. <laughs> it's dark out. So I kind of want to be like, it's weird. Like I don't like think about it for lunch. I don't want to sit down and have spaghetti no. and meatballs for dinner. Sure. hundred. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like because of the be light. comfies. I want to. Yeah. Yes. And that is for sure for us, the signaling of the end of the day. Mm, yes. Especially because exactly. we are home. So maybe it is a reward at the end of the day. For Still sure it that. is. But I mean, you know, but yeah. it's like we're working out of the studio and, and you know, these places. And that is like, I yeah. mean, for me, it's when I go home. Mm. You know, I can, I'll do work sometimes before or after. But when I go home and I have my meal, it's like, okay, I'm home. You can press. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure that is, you know, the case for a lot of people. Totally. Yes. I also love how obsessed Dave is with anti-aging. I know. Makes me so happy. I know. Um, There's a chapter in the book. I think the chapter is you get what you put in, but there's a law. If you get toxins from only nature, you can get nutrients from only food. Okay. What does he mean? I'm just going to read it because I can't put in my own words. You evolved in a clean environment to feel great and live long enough to reproduce as long as you had enough high quality food. Those days are gone. High performance now requires that you overcome the decline of clean air, food, and water by going beyond what you can get from eating even the most nutritious food. The highest performers use supplements to perform better now and live longer too. So he just emphasizes taking your vitamins. And I've really found, you know, anti-aging is also like anti-brain aging, Mm, you know, like really taking care of your brain, it definitely translates to other areas of your body. Um, and I think there was a, I think it's called telomeres. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they're trying to find a way to block the, the degeneration of the end of the telomere. Yeah. It's real science heavy for me, but it's fascinating yeah. and it's happening now and it's going to, you know, things are going to be available to the masses. It's pretty incredible. And and Dave is at the forefront of bringing these types of conversations and information to, you know, people like us. Yeah. I loved the part about um, forgiveness. Because I think, you know, that's something that, you know, I kind of have been thinking about lately when I was watching, like, I've been watching kind of things about, 
David Wilcox stuff Mm -hmm. and how, you know, consciousness and like as a species, we need to be more forgiving. And this has a lot to do with too, with like the social climate online with people kind of tearing people down or like ripping Mm -hmm. people apart for all of these little things. And when people say like, oh, you have to be more PC, you know, they don't say this to us, but it's like, I kind of think about, you know, people should be allowed to make mistakes. People should be allowed to say the wrong thing and they should be allowed to learn from everything that Mm -hmm. they do. Um, just as I should, just as you should, just as everyone in our community should. We're not perfect. We're never going to be part of the human experience is to make mistakes and to learn from them. Um, So the part where he talked about um, forgiveness, um, I thought was like one of something that was so beautiful. His law 45 says, gratitude by itself improves your performance, but the most advanced performers know that gratitude is also the doorway for forgiveness. When you forgive, you reprogram your nervous system to no longer automatically react to memories of past trauma, suffering, and perceived slights. To forgive, identify the false stories you tell yourself, then find a way to be grateful for even the worst things that you've experienced. You don't have to say that you're sorry to forgive. Forgiveness is the single most powerful upgrade to human performance. Forgive with the same intensity you bring to your mission in life and you will access new levels of energy and happiness. Mm. Yeah. And I think forgiving yourself is the, we don't realize little things that we are holding against ourselves every single day. Mm -hmm. And I think, and it's, I think it's hard work to really undo those. You know, I, I don't think it's as easy as saying, I forgive you. It's really understanding that at that time, you knew no better way. You did the best you could or you were meant to learn that lesson and you were meant to make that mistake or hurt that person and do whatever. Yeah, it's really like, I feel that. It's on like a deep level, Mm -hmm. like DNA. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And you know, the gratitude helps you move from a state of, you know, potential pitting yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's like if ever, you know, someone is like, oh, you know, this is happening to me or, you know, whatever the situation is, moving into a state of like, I'm grateful that the situation happened because now I can look at my systems that I have in place or I can now reevaluate um, relationships with my coworkers, or I can now reevaluate um, even something as small as like the way I get to work or the lunch I have for work, you know, whatever it is. But that shift in energy is really, really important and your body takes notice. Mm-hmm. Yep. Love it. So Love in this it. episode with Dave, we talk about game changers. We kind of talk about um, some of our favorite parts about it. We also talk about blue blockers. So a lot of you guys uh, have DM'd us about blue blockers because um, you're curious about them. I have a pair. So we asked him why they're important. Um, he has a brand called True Dark and they make blue blockers. Mm-hmm. Um, we also asked him about the shift to gratitude. So why is that important? And then I asked him about how he um, kind of straddles being a biohack god and then also um, having spent so many hours of his life studying and working on mastery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we also talk about smart drugs. So everything from LSD to motif. I'm going to say it wrong. Mm. Modafinil. I wrote it down 400 times in, in different Modafinil. ways. Modafinil. Modaf- I wrote it down as if I was speaking it. <laughs> Modafinil. Yeah. I wrote Modafinil. Which he took for F- eight. In all. To <laughs> Modafinil. Like, to, to spell it, to say it correctly. Because <laughs> I wanted to repeat a question saying that. And I don't know why it was like hard for me. No, yeah. It's okay. I don't think. Modafinil. We, yeah. <laughs> Modafinil. He took it for eight years in a row every single day, which is a long time. Uh, but it apparently doesn't have any adverse side effects, but really just amplifies the function of your brain, wow. ability to focus. Um, but anyway, also caffeine. And the book also talks about uh, nicotine and race tams and and all these different smart drugs that are available. And that might be good for you, might not be good for you, but hey, good to know. Um, and also the importance of downtime and how he's kind of learned the hard way to really value his downtime. Great. So once again, Game Changers, it's available on Amazon. We will have the link in show notes. Dave Asprey of Bulletproof. He can be found on social media, Bulletproof. 
uh, 360.com, all of those places. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing with your friends who need a little bit of information on biohacking. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. And you can join us in two days, February 9th for our event with Alexandra Roxo. We are going to be doing a beautiful workshop at Sage Wellness on Abikini, um, all about self-love and pleasure. And it's just going to be juicy and really good. Yeah. It's going to be juicy, intimate. Cannot Mm -hmm. wait to connect with you women. We have amazing swag goodie bags. So always expect that um, Sage Wellness, February 9th. Love you. We'll see you on the other side. I was at the cafe this morning. I love the whole crew there. <laughs> nice. That's the nicest. I know. It's the best. I get the <laughs> avocado, cauliflower rice, and sweet potato hash almost every morning. What time did you wake up today? What is like? What is the morning like for you when you have a full day? Well, like I had this? a call starting at 7 a.m. So I woke up at about 6.50 and said, I'll take my handful of smart drugs that I take on an empty stomach, and then got in the shower, got on the phone, and then muted the phone while I shaved and got dressed. Oh, I, I, I don't respect think, that. There we go. I, I don't think that. they knew that. I respect that. <laughs> but now Those are the best calls. We really are just like, You're naked. hello, <laughs> I'm present. Like, no video conferencing. <laughs> yes, honestly. First, smart drugs. Actually, when we were reading um, Game Changers, smart drugs is one of the things we wanted to talk about. And for the handful that you take every morning on an empty stomach, what are those? And um, when did you start adding those to your diet? I started using nootropics about 25 years ago. I'm only 46. I started mm-hmm. young. So. Well, your skin. I mean, I always say silky face. He's got the silkiest skin. And I started uh, before I went to business school. Uh, after I had finished, I would say, actually, forget about it. Right after I finished my undergrad. And I wish I'd have had these in college because I probably would have had doubling of my GPA. Well, almost doubling. Did you need it? (laughs) Yeah, no, my GPA was not high. uh, Here's the deal. I would fall asleep in every single class, right? Because I don't know if it was because I was tired or it was just that it's hot. uh, The lighting's crappy and the professor's talking really slowly. And frankly, it's boring. And you could say, Dave, you have ADD. Come on. And that would be accurate. However, when I eat the right stuff, when I take cognitive enhancers, pharmaceutical or non-pharmaceutical, none of that stuff is true anymore. So maybe I was doing a bunch of things in college that didn't work for me, like having a baguette for breakfast because, hey, it's low fat. It's supposed to work for you. And it's amazing how much pizza you can do if you line up your coupons just right. You could buy like <laughs> a whole. six pizzas for $22 or something and then just eat them all week. And it's it's totally economical. Totally. You're like, I'm good. It's just like comfort. Yeah. It's like eating. This is what I'm eating. You don't think about what it's going to do. Right. And also you're economizing. And if I'd have known what I know now, I would have probably focused more on coffee and I would have just not done all that. But number one, you haven't learned the control systems for your body unless you had the great fortune of having parents who you know, really taught you that stuff. So for me, I started in, I'd say, my, my mid-20s on these cognitive enhancers. And eventually I realized, well, food is a cognitive enhancer. Mother Nature has created a bunch of things that work really well. I even formulated them into smart mode, which is the flagship nootropic that I make at Bulletproof. Uh, but I went from taking modafinil, which is a prescription pharmaceutical, and I write about this in Game Changers quite a lot, actually. I took this every day for eight years. And the reason I started it, I'd gone back to school. And when I say back to school, this is at Warden. It's kind of a good school. (laughs) A little bit. (laughs) (laughs) And this is a program where they fly the professors out to you. And you take the same classes, the same number of hours, but you're also working full-time when you do it. So it's high pressure. And I was like, I sit down to take a test and I feel like I'm pretty smart. I've had a career that's already made and lost $6 million uh, before I started business school. Like I'm, I'm going to be okay here. I'm around all these smart people. And I would sit down to do a test when I felt prepared and I'd score hundred percent on the first question, 70% on the next question. And then 20% after that. And after that, I couldn't even spell my name. It was like, my brain was gone. And it scared the crap out of me. Like, what's wrong? Maybe I'm actually dumb. (laughs) I mean, that'll mess with your confidence. That's a good solution. (laughs) So I went and I 
I got my brain scanned with with Daniel Amen uh, before he was famous the way he is now as one of the the most famous brain doctors out there. And when I came back into uh, the psych- psychiatrist, it was pretty clear he was he was like, "Oh, this is one of those dumb bros who's trying to get Adderall so he can study." And this is a very common thing doctors deal with. And he just looked at my brain scan. He looked at me and, and he said, "Dave, I don't know how you're standing here in front of me. Inside your brain is total chaos." Uh, you have the best camouflage I've ever seen. So he went from this guy's just trying to get drugs to, oh my God. So I tried Adderall for a little while and it made me want to kill people. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, ugh. I've done that. It kind of does that for the military guys who use it as pilots too. In that yeah. case, maybe that's what you want. But <laughs> I, the reason I went to this guy is I wanted modafinil because I had already done my research. I was already taking smart drugs that helped. I'd been taking them for five years. So I want this new smart drug that no one talks about that was meant for narcolepsy. So... I got a prescription and I took it and it was great. It made me feel more like myself, mm. but it also made everyone around me profoundly stupid. <laughs> not not really, like so crisp. <laughs> but when you raise yeah. your speed, everyone around you, of course, just relatively speaking, they're going to feel slower. And if you're, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on a show, but if you're already kind of a dick, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> 100%. if you take modafinil or some of these other real powerful smart drugs, you might be even more of a dick. So you have to work on your, you know, your, your peacefulness. And the other thing that's in Game Changers that's really important, the, the plant-based or even, I suppose, I don't think there are any animal-based smart drugs out there, but the, the plant-based ones are generally okay when you're younger. But the pharmaceuticals like modafinil, I'm really clear, unless you have a medical need, like you're going to fail out of college, you've seen doctors, you've worked on it, you don't need to mess around with the pharmaceuticals because your prefrontal cortex isn't done forming until you're about 24. And if you're listening to this and you're under 24, you're like, screw that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. I would have said the same thing. And it's because we're wired to actually say the same thing. And until you're about until you're about 25, imagine going back 100,000 years or something, you're in a tribe of 150 people in Africa and you're at prime child age. And Mother Nature wired you to know that anyone in your tribe, anyone older than you, is clearly stupid. In fact, they're so dumb that you'd rather face getting eaten by a lion to go to another tribe to get away from those clowns. And this is so that you wouldn't just have inbreeding in your tribe and everyone would die. Like, you have to go through this. Every human being alive goes through this. My parents don't know what the hell they're talking about. All that stuff is normal. And that's your brain. And eventually that prefrontal cortex finishes doing what it's going to do. And then all of your rational thinking comes online and you have the ability to take in what's happening in the world around you, in your social life and all that, uh, plug it in and then make an emotional and rational decision together. Whereas before that, you're much more likely to be more impulsive. And that's a good thing. You're supposed to be more impulsive. But one of those impulses might be, hey, I'm going to go take a handful of modafinil or something. Just saying that's not going to serve you well in the future, especially if it modifies something in your brain, it's probably not necessary. Why don't you start with the gentler stuff and see if that works? You know, coffee's, <laughs> you know, Mother Nature's original cognitive enhancer. There's nothing wrong. I wish I could take a there. picture of Dave with his blue blockers <laughs> in our studio, drinking his bulletproof. Nothing yeah. makes me happier, <laughs> truly. So you we, you mentioned with um, modafinil that you kind of had to work on the presence and the peace when you took it. So with these smart drugs, do you find that you really have to kind of up your spiritual practices or just any like your day to day so that it doesn't get too heady? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It that's a really nuanced uh, and informed question <laughs> because some smart drugs are really cognitive, and there's a group of people we generally call them engineers, uh, and I'm one of those. Uh, it's both a gift and an affliction, and you're going to naturally live in your head. And if you experience a lot of trauma as a child, and trauma could be bullying, it doesn't have to be you know, really bad parental stuff or whatever. Um, but if you had a rough childhood for whatever reason, um, you're also more likely to say, screw all these emotions, they're probably noise and I don't want to face them anyway, I'll just live in my head. And if you do that and you take smart drugs, you can be really heady, right? Uh, but there are other things uh, that also chill out the anxiety effect that a lot of us are feeling. Uh, I make something called Zen mode, which has some really profound effects on that. Would I classify that as a nootropic? 
it's really hard to say. It's, it, it is cognition enhancing if anxiety is getting in the way of your cognition. Uh, so I would say from a meditation perspective, if you're taking things that encourage your brain to work, uh, to, to make energy properly, which is the main focus of my work, my last book, Headstrong Before uh, Game Changers, uh, really, I got into that. And 48% of us under age 40 have early onset mitochondrial deficiency. Your brain doesn't make enough energy from food and air. Therefore, your brain doesn't work as well. Like it, it's that cut and dry. That's half of people listening right now. So maybe if your audience, it's you know, less than half because yeah. you have so many smart They're people. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> We had a nutritionist on just the other day and she was talking about the importance of whole food vitamins. So this was something that I actually had never thought about until we started working with Silver Fern brand and the fact that their multivitamin is a whole food multivitamin. So this means that it has no synthetic vitamins and naturally occurring minerals, which allows your body to absorb all of the nutrients rather than providing these like fake vitamins. Yeah, the trace minerals are really important too for de detoxification if you have any heavy metals, things like that. So um, yeah, I love the whole food uh, multivitamin from Silver Fur. And I also love their probiotic, um, the ultimate probiotic. It still lives um, in your digestive tract. A lot of probiotics do not make it and therefore don't work past a certain point in your digestion. So you can trust that they live and work. Why would you need a probiotic if you're experiencing any digestive problems? Maybe your anxiety and depression is at a high level. Energy levels might be low. Um, if you have a low fiber diet or a high sugar diet, these probiotics will help to balance your gut. And we love them and trust them and have been using them for a long time now. And Charity Lighten has been on the podcast and she has just blown us away with the information um, around your microbiome. So please check those episodes out. That will definitely help you to understand more why a digestive enzyme, why a probiotic, why a multivitamin, whole food multivitamin is so important to incorporate into your routine. If you'd like to try Silver Fern Brand, you can go to silverfernbrand.com and use the code ALMOST30 for 20% off. So you can load up, get 20% off your order, silverfernbrand.com. Use the code ALMOST30. I swear there is nothing better than having crisp, comfortable bedding. I know. <laughs> I think with that also too, it's knowing that your bedding is environmentally and socially responsibly sourced mm -hmm. and is something that is at the um, a pillar for Altera Pure, which is one of our favorite sponsors. Our favorites, yeah. I mean, comfortable too, because it's not going to affect our skin. Like sometimes mm -hmm. if I've had, you know, kind of cheap bedding, I don't know where it comes from or how it's made. I've had skin reactions and Altera Pure um, is one that we trust and we just love it so much. They are sustainable. They are committed to fair, fair trade with their partners. And, you know, they've been in the textile industry for a long time. So they know what to look for um, and they don't take any shortcuts. They're super transparent about their process, how things are made. So you can literally call them up and ask them questions and they will keep no secrets and tell you what you need to know. So you can try Altera Pure by going to alterapure.com, A-L-T-E-R-R-A pure.com. Use the code almost 30 for 15% off anything and you'll get free shipping on orders over $75. So we love them so much. Alterapure.com. Something about the work that you do, you know, always just gave me pause. It's like you spent your life because of mold and the issues that you had doing so much research, like staying up so late to do all this research to figure out why you were so unhealthy, why um, you were overweight, even doing the research to bring to your doctor what kind of drug that you wanted to be taking. So it's almost like you did all the research to become, you know, to find mastery. And then, but... Bulletproof is all about biohacking. You know, it's all about kind of figuring out ways to optimize our health in an easier way, or I guess a way that you've already discovered and researched. So how do you balance the two of actually doing the research and really figuring things out on your own over time because there's so much to research to be had and then the biohacking or like shortcutting things? Oh, that is so cool. 
I went, <laughs> no, I, I'm just, you're making me think back yeah. to, to the path of this. And I hadn't, I've never even considered what you just said. And I went through and as a rational uh, scientific based human, y- you look at all the stuff you go, this is clearly such BS. Like, like acupuncture, I can find 25 studies that say it totally doesn't work. And eventually you go, well, nothing else is working. I might as well try it. I'm probably not going to die because they've been doing it for 2000 years. Mm-hmm. And you do it and it, really works. You think, wow, this is really great. And all of a sudden you have this cognitive dissonance. And then you realize, wait a minute, you meet the acupuncturists and they've been practicing for 25 years and they have all of this knowledge. And you go, someone's been lying to me, right? It, it's been fake news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's quite often pharmaceutical companies uh, behind it. And it's not a big conspiracy. It's small, tiny decisions made over the course of a hundred years. You just get these emergent properties where it looks you know, pretty, pretty bleak. So all of a sudden, it's now, who do you trust? And I went through this as I was going on this journey of becoming a master of my own biology. And you realize that some people are more credible than others. And you start looking enough of the research, you go, okay, this person gets it. And you look at another one and say, this person totally doesn't get it. And for me, this came from uh, running, starting when I was about 26, an anti-aging nonprofit group. Uh, in Silicon Valley. And we'd bring an expert in every month and I'd moderate and I'd interview them and ask them questions. They'd give a talk. And all of our audience was three times my age. (laughs) But you want to talk about learning quickly, learn from people who've been there Mm -hmm. over and over and over. And that gave me a really good radar sense to say, all right, what book should I read? Who is credible? Because especially now, it was already a, a problem in 25 years ago, there was more information than you can absorb. You just couldn't find it. Now, there's way, exponentially way more information. It's easier to find, but you can't absorb it all. So you start finding the, we'll call them gurus, you know, the, the people who generally have a good sense and are going to be filters for you based on your own interests. So if you are you know, 27 years old, you know, you're a woman and you're uh, thinking about, okay, why am I having cravings or why am I tired or how to make my brain work better, whatever your goals are, right? And maybe you're perfectly healthy and, you know, I, I want to run a marathon. It, it, it doesn't matter. You want control of your biology so your body will do it what you want. So you have the willpower to make your day. And you're going to find the people who have the types of knowledge that align with you. So be open and curious, but also skeptical because there are people out there who are very well-meaning who are going to tell you to go be a vegan, right? <laughs> and like, I was a raw vegan for a while uh, and it made me unwell. And I wrote a book on fertility with 1,300 references. My wife is a co-author who's a Karolinska-trained doctor. And I'm telling you right now, it doesn't work, especially for women. It's not okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It creates malnutrition, right? You can be vegetarian and pull it off, uh, but over time, your hormones are are not gonna function well. So you might get information that says, oh, you're doing this for your health. And you know, you can try it. And I would support your ability to try it. But if you're going to try something radical like that, get your lab tests done at the beginning and then six months later and watch what happens. The problem is sometimes it can take you a couple of years to climb out of something like that. So be a little skeptical, be a little open, and also be very much listening to what your body's doing, how you feel. And also I would get a little bit of data if you're going to do something like that and mm. uh, just, just follow the right people. Yeah. And I think what you said, you know, just really struck me was about people being filters. And I think, you know, Lindsay and I are that. And as podcasts continue to rise and as like, you know, influencers of sorts continue to rise, it's our job to be the filter for, you know, the people in our community and the women that are listening to the podcast and people like yourself for finding the information, disseminating it and figuring out what what's best for, for them. So I think that was a really interesting point it, too. It's a new role in society. So we used to have the village elder, right? And this is a person who would collect the stories from a previous generation and teach the kids to sing the songs and, and that sort of stuff. And if you look back, you know, 50 years, what played that, that position? It was only the media company. So you'd all sit down and listen to the radio show and the whole family would cluster around the radio and then TVs came out and that's what it's been. And we had a wave where social media was a part of that, but I'm guessing you guys might use Facebook less than you did before. Uh, I do too. And the reason for that is that it used to be a really good filter because I had a bunch of friends who 
would would pay attention to things. And if they would post something about the things that I care about, I knew it was going to be good. And they knew that if I posted, it'd be good. So I would post and hundreds of thousands of people would see what I was posting because I, I took the care of filtering it as using my job as a filter. But when an algorithm changes that and no one sees what yeah. I'm filtering, I'm like, I'm not doing it. But on the show, the questions you ask and you, you prepared ahead of time, you have your questions written down and you, you, you did your work ahead of time and you carefully choose your guests. And I know you do this because I've seen your success and because I have a hundred million download podcasts myself. Mm -hmm. It's a huge amount of work to filter, to find the guests uh, and to put it together with quality, but you're performing a, a valuable function in a new way that didn't exist. We didn't have a way for you know, two people to sit down and reach millions of people the way you are. And I, I think it's profound, but it's also a very large moral obligation to not screw it up. Yeah. Thanks before, for reminding me. Yeah, truly. <laughs> <It's> like, uh, <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Um, before you mentioned about um, listening to your body, and I know both Krista and I in our you know health journeys, hormones specifically, have you know been doing that more often and really tuning into that. But I'm curious what you've learned, you know, you know, I've read about it in Game Changers, but what you've learned interviewing, you know, thousands of people about listening to your body, about downtime, about finding the quiet. I mean, I cannot imagine what your calendar looks like on a day to day. So I, I'm just curious how you've been able to tune in and find, you know, the body is the most intelligent thing and really listen. A lot of advanced meditative practice. <laughs> and when I started when I wrote the definition of biohacking uh, before it was in the dictionary and before it, it became the movement uh, that it's become, I went to Tibet and I learned meditation from the masters. I did holotropic breathing with Stan Groff. I've spent uh, like four months of my life with the electrodes glued to my head doing advanced meditation, having a computer show me when my brain wasn't doing what I wanted it to do because you don't really have good, uh, good gauges. Like, there's nothing that tells you what's going on there. So we generally walk around going, I feel kind of anxious. I feel kind of pissed off or I don't know how I feel or, you know, I, I feel hungry or why is that person such a jerk? And you don't even realize that it's because you're not feeling good, mm -hmm. right? So for me, I went from really being in highly anxious, but not knowing it, which manifested as pretty angry, to be honest. Mm. Uh, and just realizing- Anxious plus being smart often becomes angry. <laughs> uh, yeah, th there you go. <laughs> Wise words. Yes. Uh, and- sitting down and, and learning how to meditate and experiencing the really altered states. And one of the rules in Game Changers, and, and Game Changers, I wish I'd had that when I was 20. I, a lot of my work, the, all of the Bulletproof blog yes. is- It's is, another filtering yeah. of yeah. information. That's probably the biggest filter I've ever made yep. yeah. uh, because it's you know, 450 interviews um, with a statistical analysis. But it, it comes down to really having that careful curiosity that says, what am I feeling and why am I feeling that? And not thinking about it at all because feelings happen before thoughts happen. And probably the fastest way uh, for people listening to you right now uh, to, to do this is a relatively affordable piece of technology. And it's called heart rate variability sensing. And there's two flavors of this. One is through the aura ring. I'm wearing this cool ring right now. Oh, yeah, no, I've seen I love those. That. Mm -hmm. And these run, I think, around 300 bucks. They have a smaller one. I have the chunky older model. <laughs> um, and what this does is every night, it measures your resting heart rate all night long, and it measures the variability of the spacing of your heartbeat. And it'll tell you when you wake up, how stressed were you last night? How well did you sleep? For instance, last night I had three hours of REM and about an hour of deep sleep. And I know my numbers, which is kind of cool. And that means if I do something crazy or I stay up really late or eat a late dinner, whatever it is, I'm going to see the results in my sleep. So that's one sort of output. But you can also get something for about $99 last I checked um, from heart math. And it clips on your ear and you do these breathing exercises while looking at your phone for 20 minutes. And what that does is it teaches you when your body is in a fight or flight mode called sympathetic mode. And I was in that mood all the time and I didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's invisible. You, you simply won't know. And then when you breathe right and you do something, and I don't have words for what that thing is, but it's a thing that you feel in your chest. It's like a little, a little switch that you flip. When you do that, all of a sudden you switch into parasympathetic, which is rest and reset mode. So after 
a few days of this, you realize, oh, I can feel what it's like when I'm more in this fight or flight mode. And actually for a lot of women, it's the other F. It's fight or flight or freeze. Those are the three big stress responses we have. And all of them are normal and all of them happen to SWAT team members and all that, depending on different things. But some of us do one more than others. And since you don't know when that's happening, all of a sudden you'll learn. And then you learn how to turn it off. So eventually after a month of this, you start playing whack-a-mole. You're walking through the day. You don't have the little thing on your ear. And say, oh, I'm feeling that thing. Let me turn it off. And all of a sudden, your total stress levels in your life go down. And then you eat a meal full of something that you're allergic to or something you probably shouldn't eat. And you feel that same feeling right after the meal. Like, oh, there's cause and effect here. And this was a really powerful way for me to do it. But I've got really good news for you. Women are much better biohackers than men. Mm. (laughs) And Tell me more. It's because, well, at least once you hit a certain age, you experience more volatility in the state of your body every month. And it's a normal thing because you have a monthly cycle, right? So you know, okay, today I'm really not feeling that good. Guys are much more deaf. We have our own uh, monthly hormonal cycles too. They're just very small and we're not going to see them. Mm. So men quite often just don't learn to listen to their body at all other than, oh, I have a broken leg. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of yeah. like, <laughs> it's kinda like <laughs> being, being tough and all that. Yeah. In fact, if you're a, a typical guy and you actually learn to not show vulnerability, even if you did pick up a feeling, you'd say, ah, screw that one. I'm not going to mm-hmm. do it. Right. And, and that's not a good place to be. You'll, you'll be unhappy if you're in that world, but it's very common. And women are societally in the US in a way, they're allowed to be more emotionally vulnerable than men, um, which is a gift because if you're allowed to feel your feelings, you'll probably pick up some feelings that are part of, okay, what did I just do that made me feel extra cranky or made me feel extra happy or why did I sleep really well last night or why did I sleep poorly? And I, I really, my experience, any anytime I've coached a woman, they pick up the biohacking stuff faster. Mm. The, the self-awareness is better. And I'm making generalizations mm. here. I'm sure there's a few people who aren't good, but if I had to just, just guess, I'd say that's a very common and predictable trend. So mm. um, good news. <laughs> Keep paying attention to those emotions. They're kind of a good signal. Yeah. I've actually been working on feeling my feelings more this year. I feel like there was like a point in time, especially when you're building a business that it wasn't like serving me to always feel. And you kind of have to differentiate you know, which feeling to attach to and act on and stuff. But yeah, I think that's um, really great. And I wanted to talk about just briefly, our community is obsessed with blue blockers now. So can you tell, I know it's a little off topic, but can you tell why someone wears blue blockers? You're wearing yours now. Sure. Uh, The ones I'm wearing are a company that I founded Mm. called True Dark. And we make two different sets of, of glasses. One is the ones you wear during the day. And people are obsessed because Indoor lighting sucks. Mm -hmm. LED lights are crap. They stress your brain out. They stress your eyes out. They flicker at a rate that you can't consciously see, but that your body Mm -hmm. sees that Mm -hmm. is stressful. And they emit the wrong frequencies of light. A lot of blue light, way more than mother nature ever intended. When you see blue light outdoors, it's because you're in sunlight with red and infrared and and all the colors of the rainbow, like lucky charms. And (laughs) 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 what... What's missing though is when you go indoors, it, it's these kind of narrow slices of this cold thing. It hurts your body. The cells inside your cells, these ancient mitochondria, they evolve to be in dark or in sunshine and maybe some shade, but there's a defined spectrum and light is a drug. Light's a signaling molecule to them, just like a peptide or a, a chemical inside your body. Mm. And when people wear the true dark glasses, they generally have more energy because they're not getting that light stress. And to make it more fashionable, I'm wearing my cool, I look like a superhero. That's what I like to tell myself. <laughs> people, <laughs> yes, might, you do. <laughs> people might say it like a dork. I'm cool with that too. Um, it will say it's noticeable. And we, we came out with a line of fashion oriented ones that only, they block less blue light, but you can't tell that they're blue blockers. They just make you look smarter. And uh, those have been really popular because people just want to feel good. I mean, our, our core drive, we want to be happy. Yeah. And it's hard to be happy if at the end of the day, you're either, you have food cravings because- your brain's like, I'm done. Could you give me some sugar? Because it's an emergency. I, I exerted all of my effort, not on doing stuff, but just on staring at this bright screen with these dumb overhead lights with those highly reflective metal little grates over them that we like to put over cubicles. Oh, and this is great. When you're younger, if you work in corporate America, you always get the crappiest cubicle with the worst Ever. lighting and the creaky chair and all that stuff. Prison. Tiny yeah. prison. It's a tiny prison. And it's that's why blue blockers matter because you want to feel good at the end of the day. But the 
the real kicker for me was the ones you put on at night. And this is a patented technology from True Dark. And I think I read about them in Game Changers because the power of sleep really came out. Yep. And I've eliminated my jet lag with these glasses. So before bed for an hour or so, I wear some darker red glasses and everything's pretty dim. But when I monitor my sleep, my percentage of deep sleep goes up dramatically. So I'm still sleeping the same number of hours. I just got a higher return on investment for my sleep. And if I have to wear some kind of weird glasses before bed, I'll do that. Or this is going to sound crazy. I have red lights in my bedroom, so I don't have to wear my glasses. I just turn on the desk the, or the lamp that's right next to my bed. And I've got one that's normal color and one that's red. You mm-hmm. turn on the red one, you don't need the glasses. Mm-hmm. But I found the True Dark stuff to be really profoundly useful for me. And I'm just going to plug it. TrueDark.com. Yeah, yeah. True, true it well, it's funny because like if everyone was walking around with True Dark like glasses on, everyone would think it's like fine and yeah. cool and not dorky and they wouldn't be self-conscious about, oh, does it look like I'm wearing blue? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. it's only a matter of time. I know I'm getting older because I'm getting to the point where I'm not caring. Yeah, truly. Like yeah. where I'm like, we're about to buy the flat <laughs> shoes, the Vibrams. Oh yeah. Or like the two. <laughs> no, yeah. Literally, yeah. we were, like, we're like, should we buy toe shoes? And we're like, okay, maybe. And I'm, it's like okay. getting to the point where I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm this age now. <laughs> I, I'm I am, the age where I don't care. I have to talk about this because you, you mentioned toe shoes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, one of my best friends uh, hates my toe shoes. Uh, her name's JJ Virgin. <laughs> just hates them. She's very oh, fashionable. I've heard of her. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah she's she's, she's just a dear br- she's friend. Book. Helped Aww. me so much. Uh, one of my mentors, and uh, has a great shoe collection. And I wear toe shoes because my feet don't hurt, and I just I, I'm happy when I wear them. And so she's been complaining for years. And I bought some studs on Amazon, those metal like triangle studs from a motorcycle jacket, like Valentino shoes would yes. have. And I put those on each toe. <laughs> 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 I'm like, there, now they're cool. And she just face palmed, right? But this You month, should paint the bottom red. <laughs> oh, I'm so doing there that. You go. There you but, go. But, the right. bottom's red. This month in men's health, there's a five page spread on me. And I'm sitting in one of my pieces of equipment from Upgrade Labs wearing my toe shoes with Valentino yeah. little blingy things Hell on the yeah. toes. So now they're like in a national magazine. It's going to have to be a, a fashion film. <laughs> Next oh, Vogue. My God. Yeah. Yes. And JJ, uh, come on. They're going to be fashionable, I That's swear. That's incredible. I love that. <laughs> well, someone, we were at the gym and we were kind of doing like motion mechanics stuff and they were saying um, that it's like better for your butt, you know, because yeah. you get full full squat or like full to the ground or you're able to engage your hamstrings and your glute. I was like, okay, it does <laughs> say no more. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to be doing squats and heels, you're not going to get your yeah, butt truly. activated. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking the other day, I cannot wait to make my kids drink Four Sigmatic. <laughs> Isn't that a weird thought, but kind of true. <laughs> All right, y'all, you've heard it from us so many times because it's true. And we are diehard fans of Four Sigmatic. Their adaptogenic mushroom blends are the best of the best. They are so delicious. They offer coffee mixes, superfood blends, elixirs. They even have new beauty products. Check it out. Forsigmatic.com slash almost 30 will bring you to our landing page. And it has some of our favorite products listed just for your reference. And I actually just bought the mushroom starter kit, which is mm, some of my favorites, the mushroom coffee mix, the mushroom hot cacao mix, and the mushroom matcha mix, which is so, so good. Um, It's on sale now, just FYI. But their products are of the highest quality. You can trust them. And I just love what Four Sigmatic is all about. They're not a Opposed to taking risks and really doing things different. This brand is the raddest. We've had Taro, the founder, on our podcast a couple times. Check out those episodes. In the meantime, go to foursigmatic.com slash almost 30. Use the code almost 30 at checkout for 15% off. So that's foursigmatic.com slash almost 30. Code almost 30 for 15% off. All right, I'm checking in with everybody. First few months of the new year, how are we doing on our resolutions, promises to ourselves, new routines, we're implementing all the things. I feel like Almost 30 Nation's pretty damn good at this stuff. For me, I've been able to really stick to my clean eating, uh, even with the busy schedule uh, I'm facing every week, which I'm sure all of you are too, where you know I'm not able to go to the grocery, sh- grocery store all the time um, and on time and get all the things I need. So Daily Harvest has really 
really been such a game changer. So I'm able to still get my fruits and vegetables. They're frozen at peak freshness, carefully sourced, and chefs create these really thoughtful harvest bowls, soups, breakfast bowls. I mean, they're so delicious. The smoothies are incredible. I have all good things to say. And it's so easy. Like literally uh, open the cup, either pour it in a, in a uh, saute pan or you put it in your blender, add your favorite nut milk, whatever you want. I mean, it's so easy. It takes five minutes max to prepare. You cannot beat that for a healthy meal. So if you'd like to try Daily Harvest, you can go to daily-harvest.com and enter the promo code ALMOST30 to get three free cups in your first box. So that's promo code ALMOST30 for three free Daily Harvest cups at daily-harvest.com. That's daily-harvest.com. previously on the podcast, when you were on, we talked about you in your twenties and thirties. And I'd love to just kind of impart some, you know, wisdom and messages that you not just wish you knew, but it's more of like what you know now and how healthy you are now and um, just operating at such a high level. What can, you know, our audience of 20 somethings and 30 somethings be doing today to be just in the position to be performing at a high level in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s? It's your job in your 20s uh, to figure out all the systems in your body. Mm. And having looked at hundreds of people's brains at 40 Years of Zen, the the Neurofeedback Center, it's an expensive five-day intensive program for executives. Different people have different skills. And, And if you find that there's something that you can do, but you don't like it and it makes you tired, so you say, I better do more of that so I won't be so weak. You're totally doing it wrong. And, and that's a big theme in Game Changers. In fact, it's the first law in Game Changers is like, don't do that. Now, there are skills you must have. <laughs> you have to be good enough at this in order to function. Uh, but when you realize, okay, you have some superpowers and they're no better or worse than your friend's superpowers, they're probably different. Just like you have an ideal diet. And the foods that are most compatible with your body might not be the same as your friend. And neither of them is good or bad. They're just different. So it's your job to understand your strengths and your weaknesses and figure out what strengths do you want to double down on and what weaknesses are you going to say, oh, thank God, I know I'm weak at that. I can hire that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And even if you're 25 and you're doing your first company and you only have $12 an hour to pay someone, spend your $12 an hour to pay someone on the stuff that you suck at that makes you tired. because. If you look at what that's going to do for you over the course of the next 50 years, you will be doing really well. And there's a statement, and I'll I'll paraphrase it, but it's something about uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, the, The millionaires figured out how to do a lot of things that they're good at figuring out how to do things. And the billionaires figure out who is going to do the things. Mm. <laughs> and it's a completely different mindset. And people say, Dave, how did you scale Bulletproof the way you have? And I've raised $68 million of venture capital. Bulletproof was a blog that I started on the side, what, in 2012, late 2011 or something? And it's 2018. And we're in you know, every Whole Foods and Sprouts and you know all over Crushing the place it. on Bulletproof yeah. and Amazon yeah. and all that. So how is that possible? Well, <laughs> it's because I know what I'm not good at and I know what I'm good at and I learned how to hire people. So one of the things you could do is just be real comfortable with your strengths and weaknesses. Do your work on your emotions, um, like you were talking about. How do you how do you feel your feelings? <laughs> when you start a company, your company is your baby. And if you choose to have kids, uh, the way I did, I I delivered both my kids at home. It, when you have a baby, you feel like it's a part of you. It's actually part of your energetic field. When you have a company, the company is another kind of baby and it's part of your energetic field. That means anything that feels like a threat to the company feels like it's going to kill you, like a tiger in your living room about to eat you. And so you go through this huge amount of stress and anxiety. And it's your job to learn how to allow (laughs) the company to exist and be supported by you but to not feel like you're going to die if your company doesn't do what you want it to do, even if the company goes out of business. I've failed lots of times uh, in business. And it's that I feel like I'm going to die when my business isn't doing well that causes so much pain. And if you heard that, you say, how am I going to perform over long periods of time? 
stop feeling like you are your career or your company and just realize you're entirely independent of that. Stop feeling like the ruling game changers, like how much money you make is going to make you happy. Um, one of the things I wish I'd told myself when I was 20 is stop chasing the money. Mm-hmm. Of the 450 people whose interviews got consolidated into the wisdom and game changers, not one single person named money, fame, or power as their three most important pieces of advice. And if you look at the way I phrase that question, if someone came to you tomorrow and said, I want to perform better at everything I do as a human being, what are your three most important pieces of advice? Well, when you get this from Nobel Prize winners and all this, this is the answer to your, you know, what would you do in your 20s uh, kind of a question. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure I could tell you in one answer, uh, but I do think the 46 laws here, the right answer is in there, but it's a different law for a different mm. person. And the book is written so that you go through there and you say, this one really stood out and there's exercises at the end of each law to see if it's right for you and tells you what to do. And just pick three and do those. And when you're done, you're going to have more energy. You're going to have more freedom. And then you'll probably pick a few more. But no one on earth is going to do all 46 at once. But this is uh, this is a lot of wisdom. I, uh, I wish someone had told me all these things. And frankly, to grow bulletproof the way I have, I got to interview all these people and ask them the questions, which helped me be a better CEO and just a better father and things like that. Mm. I love it. Yeah, one of, just the last thing to say, the one of the things I really love about going into Bulletproof in Santa Monica is it's so funny, you know, and I don't know if this shift happened with Game Changers, but seeing um, the focus on gratitude and community in such a place that's, you know, science-led, you know, a lot of the food and beverage there is based on science that, you know, helps us feel, look better. But then to see, you know, your, you are your community and these things, it always gives me pause. I'm like, Oh, wow. You know, like we are finally at a place in time in our culture when we could merge these two, when we could recognize that in addition to the science. The the science of gratitude is profound because we can put people in fMRI machines and we can get EEGs. And a big part of the training that I, I do with people at 40 Years of Zen is, hey, if you don't experience gratitude, you can't experience forgiveness. And this is, by the way, something that's a major thing in your 20s. And <laughs> your body picked up all sorts of patterns from uh, your early childhood. It's, it's basically a system trying to figure out how to stay alive in the world without any knowledge of what the world is. So if someone yelled at you when you were two, for a good reason, probably, like because you tried to stick your tongue in the socket or <laughs> like two-year-olds <laughs> do stupid things, right? But at the time, it really you know, rattled you. And it stuck. So now someone yells at you and you're 25 in a meeting and you freeze because that's what you did when you were two. You didn't, this was a decision you made. It was an automatic response. Well, we all have that. It doesn't matter how good you are. If you're alive, we all have just patterns that are dysfunctional. And it turns out to let go of dysfunctional patterns, there's a recipe that we use at 40 Years of Zen. And it starts with gratitude. And uh, then you can go into forgiveness, uh, which is really profound. And there's very spiritual teachings from the West, from the East, where they talk about compassion and forgiveness and and all these things. I'll tell you, if someone pisses you off and you're carrying that grudge around, you want to perform well for the next 50 years, learn how to be grateful. So if someone did something that really hurt your feelings, really made you mad, you can look at it as, all right, what did I learn from this? And the first thing you do is gratitude. What's the one thing that came out of this that was good. And even if it's something you know, really bad, you know, I was, I was in a really, really bad car accident. Like, well, okay, I'm in the hospital for two months, but at least I get a new car. <laughs> you focus on the fact you got a new car, right? It, it wasn't worth it. Yeah. But your body is so wired that if you can just feel gratitude, it turns off all the inner whining and all the pain and suffering. So now you're being grateful for things that actually sucked, right? And then you go on to the next thing, which is right, I'm going to forgive the other driver for hitting me or whatever it is. And we teach people to do this with electrodes on their head to make sure that they're not cheating on it. Mm-hmm. But gratitude is that important because it lets you stop carrying a grudge because grudges are the most expensive thing. They have no return ever. They cost you all the time. And if you accumulate more and more of them over your life, you'll just get old and it'll suck. Bam. Well, we always are so grateful when so you make grateful. the time. And Krista and I have you know, talked about this just about you specifically that, you know, you are so present Mm -hmm. when you are with people and that really means a lot. And Mm -hmm. I think it goes a long way. And, you know, Game Changers, for me, I just, after reading it, it was, I guess the one word that came to my mind and heart was like, 
there's freedom. Like yeah. your commitment to yourself is the freedom you've been looking for. You know, we we create all of these false pressures and, you know, the words that we put out into the world create these like expectations and limits and, and just the commitment to yourself is the freedom. So this book is that and more, and, um, you can get it on Amazon and mm-hmm. I just highly recommend it. It's, yeah. it's so great. We'll link it in the show notes. You guys can pick up Game Changers on Amazon. Me and Lindsay both have a copy. We love it. It's so easy to read. It's got some of the best names in the game in here. Thank you so much. We are so grateful for you. It's a pleasure to be here live with you. Oh, Oh, yes. It was was all our (laughs) pleasure. So thank you guys so much. Bulletproof 360, Bulletproof, and then Game Changers on Amazon. We will see you next week. Always a good day when Dave Asprey's in the studs. I've been loving Bulletproof lately, so. Me too. Into it. I take the glutathione. You do? Mm -hmm. Is it a pill form? What does it do? Two tablets every day. It's like a, it's like their mega antioxidant. Cool. Oh so it's yes. Good for anti aging. Yes, the Shit. master antioxidant. Master, yeah. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, you only take eight hundred pills a day. Eight hundred. Honestly, <laughs> I'm looking now. At now it's fun. Sixty pills right now. Now it's fun. It's like a snack time. Well, it's like you should just. I feel bowl. like I honestly feel like a science experiment. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, here I am. Yeah. Taking my... Yeah. I'm a robot. I'm like a fucking rat. <laughs> yeah. Mm, well, who knows if it works. <laughs> I think it does. We'll keep you posted. Um, but thank you for listening. Thank you in advance for rating and reviewing on iTunes. It helps us so much to get guests like Dave on the podcast and just to grow what we're doing here. And so... We'd love to meet more of you this year on tour. We will be announcing our tour dates really soon. We're going global, baby. Mm. So Australia, London are added to our, you know, domestic tour, Canada, all the things. Yeah. And I want to read a review from Nemer, N-E-M-E-R. Thank you so much. Five stars. Relatable, hilarious, intentional, informative. These women brighten my day and make my morning commute worth every mile. They are funny, yet bright light on so many issues in a relatable and realistic manner. The guests they have on are equally informative and diverse. It's my go-to podcast when I need extra motivation or just need a good laugh. They don't claim to know it all or be correct all the time, but they try to consistently make themselves more aware and ever-evolving. Thank you so much for being a continuing part of my growth and having an amazing platform for people to speak out about what is important. Thank you, Nemar. So sweet. Yeah. So your reviews on iTunes mean so much. It helps us grow. It helps us continue this community based on support, love, and kindness. Yeah. Yeah. So we will see you on tour this year. Our dates will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. We're just working on that over here at HQ. And see you next time. Love ya. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>